of the, the Vancouver Canucks playing against the Seattle Kraken tonight. Kraken are a good team, man. I got some more stuff on them I want to dive into later. They're, they're, you, did you see their game last night? 8-1 shellacking on the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, but some interesting things from the lines. There was only six defensemen on the ice today at practice. Uh, no sign of Guillaume Brisebois, you know, no Willannon or, or Juleson for the rest of the season. It's what it's looking like. So the line combinations, we'll start with the defense pairings, actually. Quinn Hughes and Kyle Burrows are going to be playing together. Akito Hirose and uh, Tyler Myers, they're going to be on the second pairing together. And then Jack Rathbone and Ethan Bear uh, as the third pairing. We got a whole segment on Jack Rathbone coming up here in a little bit. But I want to show this as well, the power play, the second power play unit. How about Akito Hirose getting an opportunity to play on the second power play unit uh, with the Vancouver Canucks? An NHL moment for heck, he's going to get a good run. I saw the, I tweeted this out earlier today, and some of the replies were pretty funny looking at this power play unit because the power play unit for the Vancouver Canucks today, the second power play unit that is, is Sheldon Dries, Akito Hirose, Anthony Bavillier, uh, Connor Garland, and Jack Rathbone. <laughs> it's the, you know, we've there's been some exciting second power play units in Vancouver over the years. I don't know if this is one of them. Uh, this this would be a very good AHL power play. Uh, but there's you know there's some NHL players there. I think uh, Garland doesn't really find it on the power play. I like him more at five on five. But Villiers in the bumper hasn't really worked out. They tried that on the first unit when he first got here. That hasn't worked out. It, it's just it's a. Uh, you know, it's an island of misfit toys here on the second power play unit. And I think having Akito Hirose in there makes it even more interesting. But Rick Tockett spoke about it today, giving uh, Hirose an opportunity. He spoke pretty highly. Um, he said when he went back and watched the game tape and actually watched the film, he was actually even more impressed. Uh, just with a lot of like little decision making by Hirose. And I'm excited to see him play another game. I wasn't blown away with his first game. I thought he was fine-ish. Um, I didn't, I just didn't think it was, you know, great, but something in his game, Rick Tockett really liked, uh, let's hear Rick Tockett here talking about why Hirose is getting an opportunity on that second power play unit. Yeah, it was, yeah, we needed to, on the second, is probably a two, two defense unit. Um, and he's, his skill level and his, uh, pocket IQ. So why not throw him in there, evaluate him, you know, playing a, a good game, a good team like Seattle going to the playoffs. You know, it's good to throw a guy in there and see what he can do on, in, in those pressure situations. And, and then he'll have a good taste this summer. That was talked about a little bit today uh, from Rick Tockett about just the, the summer stuff. And, I mean, it, it's kind of a, a regular thing now. It's kind of – it's almost like the swear jar, right, for Rick Tockett when he says the word summer. Like, he's got to throw, like, a toonie in there uh, into a jar or something. Uh, but your thoughts on Hirose getting uh, an opportunity here on the second power play unit. He's going to be playing on the left half wall, it looks like. That's what it was in practice today anyways. Really good AHL power play, but I don't think you're too upset about that. Like, let's be honest here. Um, Akito Hirose had a really solid first game, I thought. And I think you talk, kind of spoke about it there. The things that really stood out were his smarts with the puck, especially breaking out of his own end. And obviously that's not too much of what you're doing on the power play, but his skill with the puck on his stick, I want to see more of that. Like, you're not getting a ton of offensive opportunity at 5-on-5 five five if you're Akito Hirose. Like, you're playing with Tyler Myers. You know, he didn't have a ton of, ton of chances to show off his offensive chops. I love it. I love giving him the shot. This is this is what this team should have been doing like 20 games ago, right? And, um, you know, how often do we talk about the, oh, we, we, we would really like to see this guy in this role. We'd really like to see Kratzov, Pod Colson playing with Elias Pettersson and whoever. I really like to see it for Akito Hirose getting this opportunity. And like Talk had said, you know, getting a chance to play against a team like the Seattle Kraken, it's going to show him a lot of what he needs to do going into the summer. And that's that's the value for these college free agents, right? Is it's not, okay, well, I'm going to make this team. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be able to play in the NHL for sure. Like the reason you put them in these games is so that they can see, okay, I'm pretty far off here and this is what I need to work on, right? Because it's one thing for someone to tell you, right? Like it's, it's one thing for the development staff to sit down Akito Hirose and say, okay, you need to work on this. Um, you know, any player, not just Hirose, obviously. Um, it's one thing to hear it from someone, but we've spoken to players who, you know, get that taste at the NHL level, right? And then they go back down to the AHL and it doesn't even have to be a college guy, just anybody. Um like any AHL player that gets a shot at the NHL level, like even R.C. Baines, for example, let's take him for example. You know, the reason we want to see him get this shot at the end of the year isn't because, oh, well, he's going to make this team better and they're going to win more games because of it. It's to give him that chance where you say, hey, you had a really solid season in the AHL. 
here's what you need to do to get to the NHL level. Give, give him a shot at the NHL and then he can figure it out. Like he can see, okay, well, I need to work on this. And, you know, they were right. Not that he distrusts them or anything like that, but, you know, he's going to get here and he's going to see, oh, wow, okay, this is what I need to work on. And that's what you want for these players at this point. Yeah, I, th I think it's a step in development, right? Like getting the opportunity is a huge step in the development. I think that part also, that step, without that step, you don't really know exactly what to push in the summer. And that was, I actually asked Rick Talk at that today. Um, like what would be something that a player, like what would be an exceptional summer for a player and how they work out about it. And a lot of it came down to the testing. Uh, you said like, you know, they're going to test their numbers for how hard they actually worked in the off season. The, you know, the expectation was very high, but I think another one was like understanding their role with the organization, what they want. And I think a lot of that comes from playing these NHL games. I just, I, I'm a little sent here because like Akito Hirose going on to the second power play unit. Um, the way that Talkett mentioned it in the quote that we just played was like, yeah, it's a, it's a two defenseman unit, but it's like, man, you know, you talk about giving these guys opportunity. I'm looking at Aiden McDonough, who was probably the best power play scorer in the NCAA over the last three seasons. I'd play him on the power play. Uh, he has a lot of chemistry with Jack Rathbone. They skate together all summer. They play together as kids. If Rathbone's going to be the power play quarterback on that second unit, Give him the guy that he knows and trusts on his side. Like, make his passes over there to his buddy there and let uh, let McDonough actually do that thing that he's been doing his whole career. The thing that he's best at is scoring from the right half all on the power play. That's, like, what I, you know, when watching him over the NCAA over the years, I'm just thinking, like, McDonough is going to score at the NHL level from that spot. His shot is that good. It is going to score. So when you see Akito Hirose getting an opportunity on a power play unit ahead of Aiden McDonough, I understand where talk is coming from. They want, they really want to have two defensemen on that second unit for some reason. Um, you know, Harmon said this on this show a lot. Harmon hates two defensemen on a power play unit. I don't think Hirose is going to add as much offense as Aiden McDonough would to a second power play unit. I guess the argument against that is okay, but they're not going to get scored on as much. But in my eyes, it's like, Hey, what is it? Six games left in the season. Do you really care about getting scored on when you're on the power play at this point? Like, are, are these points that critical where, you know, I, I think you need to open up that door for McDonough to see what a power play looks like at the NHL level because he crushed it. He crushed it in the NCAA. He was the best power play scorer in the NCAA for years. I, a little surprising to see Hirose uh, get the opportunity. A guy who, like, I, I don't even think Hirose was doing power play one for, for Minnesota State Mankato. Like... <laughs> You know, that was Livingstone's spot. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's, it's a wild thing for me to see this happen. But, I mean, good opportunity for the kid, of course. I'm happy for Hirose. But as a whole, looking at development, you know, I'd like to see McDonough get a little bit of time there. I still, like, hope to see him in a top six role. Happy to see McDonough continue to play and be in the NHL lineup. But I was a little surprised. Uh, probably the, the most shocking thing I saw on the ice today was that, was Akito Hirose on the second power play. So, we'll see it tonight. Uh, matching up against the Kraken, it's going to be a good game. And, uh, 